morning, good morning. Be happy to be back. This is the day the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, had it not been for the Lord on my side, where would I have been? Amen. Good morning. Thank you for watching. Thank you for stopping by here this morning. It's a great privilege. As I always say, I start with the same opening phrase. It's a great privilege and an honor to be alive and to be well in such a day as this one. Many great men have sought to have seen this day. Many have been looking for the answers to eternal life. But we thank God that he's given that freely to us. Without any effort of ours, you and I have done nothing to deserve it except that God has given by His grace. My name is Pastor Abel of the Redeemed Tabernacle. This is Daily Grace. Um, on June the 25th, I believe, we started the de devotionals online and we've been streaming for well over uh, 40 days, I believe, by now. And by the grace of God, I'm just happy and excited at what God has been doing through the short videos that we've been doing. Some of you have been encouraged. Some of you have been blessed. Some have been delivered. And we thank God for all of the good testimonies. Um, however, today marks the end of July, the month of July, the seventh month. Today is the last day of July. And I'll be traveling out from... Uh, tomorrow so i'll not be able to stream live but we have enough videos for for us to be able to reverse it you can go through them find the ones you've not watched watch them if they are helpful to you share them with someone else what is more important to me is not that you're sharing my video or you're watching my video or liking them or commenting on them but that you are sharing the gospel of the lord jesus christ on your facebook or instagram or twitter or take the platform use it as a tool use it for a good work and influence the world that way amen so god bless you i want us to say a prayer as we always do and then we'll begin gracious heavenly father we thank you this morning once again lord if i'm alive and well and if if our, our viewers and our listeners are alive and well we know it's because you sustain us it's because you are life support lord and so this morning we thank you for that father as we take your word as we read through your word as we we we, we admonish ourselves and as we inspire ourselves through your word we pray let the sweet holy spirit that you promised us lord come take this word use it oh lord jesus christ and use it to bless us i ask so oh, heavenly father forgive us our transgressions for even the great apostle paul says i repent daily as long as we remain in this earthly mortals lord there would be deficiencies but i ask that your spirit would would cleanse those those errors and those sins and lord this morning will be presented before you as spotless and blameless as a lamb that has never erred we thank you lord jesus in the name of the lord jesus we pray amen amen this morning i want to speak on the topic being the last day i want to kind of encourage all of us a bit as i do every now and then i pick up on certain topics that i believe will strengthen our faith would encourage us in our Christian walk. And this morning is one of those. I want to speak on a topic titled, Do Not Be Afraid. Do Not Be Afraid. Amen. Do Not Be Afraid. I've heard it being said by many different people preaching that, well, the Bible states about 365 times. Some say it's 366 times. Do not be afraid. Well, the fact of the story is you may not find the exact phrase in the Bible saying, do not be afraid that many times. But what I know is that we have over 1,120 chapters in the Bible. And in every one of them, Jehovah God is, is promising his divine protection to his children, to his people. And so we know this, that it is even just more than him saying, do not be afraid. 
But however, there are places in the Bible where we would find clearly that God is speaking to us, telling us not to be afraid. And why would he say, do not be afraid? If I told you right now, hey, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. I'm taking you somewhere, but I'm telling you before we go, do not be afraid. The reason why I would be telling you do not be afraid is because there is something that can possibly make you afraid. I know you're hearing me. The Bible doesn't say do not be afraid and it's, it's just like a slogan. Hey, do not be afraid. Hey, it, it, it's not that. But every word that we find in scripture is purposefully placed there, divinely placed in that portion of scripture so that it would serve a purpose, a purpose of giving us that confidence when we get into such a situation. Because yes, there are things that would make us afraid. The first thing we would realize is when we get into the Bible, right from the seed book of the Bible, the book of Genesis, we would witness that in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, the Bible says that Satan, the serpent, would be bruised. The seed of the woman would bruise the head of the serpent. So since the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says that the head of Satan, the serpent, has been bruised. And if you know anything about serpents, snakes, when the head of a snake is bruised, it becomes furious. It will be searching for someone to bite and release all of his venom. So yes, we, are, we have to be afraid. When the Bible says, do not be afraid, it's because there is something to be afraid of. I want us to pick on a couple of scriptures. Read it and see what the Bible says about the times that we are living in. Why we should not be afraid. So when you pick up on your Bible, let me quickly switch over so we can read a scripture together. Amen. So we would read from 2 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5, and we will read the verse 5. So 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5, the Bible says that be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, your enemy, the devil, as a roaring lion, walks about seeking whom he may devour. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, your enemy, the devil, as a roaring lion walks about seeking whom he may devour. The Bible also says that the devil knows that his days are numbered, his time is due, and so he's putting all of his efforts, his last minute energy, into seeking and chasing the children of the Lord with one purpose, to seek, to find, to steal, to kill, to destroy. And so you as a child of God would have to be vigilant. You have to be sober. You have to be very eye-opened. It is not time for us to be playing games, but it is time for us to be sober, to be vigilant, to be very eye-opened to be very, very, very conscious of where you are right now. It's not time for games, but we understand that the Lord says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid because he is with us, because he will uphold us, because he himself will sustain us. I want us to look at another scripture here in the book of First Corinthians chapter 15. When we look at First Corinthians chapter 15 from the verse 55, O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. And then we move on to 56, 57. But thanks be to God. I think I skipped one. All right. 50, 56, the, the sting of death. And 57 will say that, but thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the works of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Remain steadfast. Remain focused on the calling which the Lord has called you with. 
and do not be afraid of anything. Now watch this. In the book of Joshua chapter 1, we find that after Moses had taken the children of Israel out of Egypt, brought them across the Red Sea, they got into the wilderness and because of the moanings and the complaints and the groaning of the children of Israel, Moses disobeyed God and God took him off the scene. Now here is a young man, Joshua. God calls him and puts him as a leader. And he doesn't know what to do, where to go for, where to go from that point. Everyone is watching him. Okay, Moses is gone. Now, what is Joshua going to do? God shows up on the scene and he calls this young man and he says to him, he gives him a promise. He, he speaks the same promise as he spoke to Moses to Joshua. And he tells him in Joshua chapter 1 verse 9, Have I not commanded you, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be ye dismayed, for I, the Lord your God, I am with you wherever you go. So be strong, do not be afraid. The the Lord is telling us this morning, you have to look at all the things going on, all the afflictions, all of the troubles, all the pro prophecies being fulfilled, all of the works of the enemy, looking at the times, the evil days that we are living in, and you would be afraid for your soul, you would be afraid for your children, you would be afraid for the, of the things that are going on, the lies and the wickedness of men. But nonetheless, if you go back to the promises of God, you know that we are living in glorious times because we are living in the days of the harvest. It is in days like this that Christ has promised to come back and to and, and, and catch his, his bride and catch his children away in the rapture for us to go live with him eternally. And so, yes, we are living in troubled times, but we are also living in glorious times. And the word of the Lord for you this morning is this, do not be afraid. Do not be dismayed. Do not be discouraged. Do not be discomfited. Do not fret. Do not be ashamed. Do be, be steadfast and unmovable. Be strong, resolute. That is what God is telling us this morning. He wants us to focus on him. Put our trust in him. Because see, the battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord. And he has already won the victory. Scripture says, thanks be to God who causes us to triumph. Our triumph, our victory. He is the banner of our victory. He's already won the battle. Death. Where is your sting? Where is your power? Why? He's taken the keys of death and hell and the grave. He's locked it up. He's freed those that he wants to free. You and I are no more under the bondages of sin. We are no more under the chains of Satan. So when he comes as a roaring lion looking for whom he will devour, thanks be to God because the anointing that is on you and I is the anointing of an eagle. The eagle is not walking on the surface of the earth. The lion can prowl all that it wants but the eagle is soaring high in the sky yes the lion cannot fly the bible says the devil is like a roaring lion but hey the children of god are the flying eagles we soar past the atmosphere and the devil cannot get to that atmosphere there is a saying that eagles do not fight their battles on the ground when they catch an animal or they fight any animal they catch that animal and they fly up with it. Go into the atmosphere, into a place where that animal cannot even breathe. Why is it doing that? We have to learn to fight our battles on our territory and not on the territory of the enemy. So Satan is coming as a lion. He is roaring. He is furious. He knows that he has less time to operate. But watch this. The eagle anointing, the power of the Holy Ghost, the Lord Jesus already won it. And he's telling you, be not afraid. Not of the arrows by, by day, not of the shadows by night. Be not afraid, not of the flood, not of the fire. Be not afraid. David knew this. So he says that, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, yet I will fear no evil. Do not be afraid, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but he has given us power, love, sound mind. He's given us everything we need to overcome whatever the devil has devised. 
I don't know what you're going through, but I want to encourage you. There is enough victory in what Christ has done in the past, but I want to assure you that there is so much, so victory exactly as he overcame in the past. The potency of the power is still the same and even greater because he said in Mark 16, the things that I did, you shall do also and even greater things. So now he's doubled the anointed in our generation. And if he overcame, if he locked things up, if he defeated death and the devil and Satan, then guess what? You have the power to do the same. You will trample over snakes and scorpions. The poison will not harm you because God has granted you the victory. Do not be afraid. Only be thou encouraged and be thou steadfast and unmovable. I remember Peter looking at Jesus and watching him walk on the waters. He was not afraid. He turned back and looked at him. He knew that as long as Jesus is with him, is with the disciples, and if it is Jesus walking on the waters, there is no fear. He said, Master, if it is truly you, cause me to come. Bid me to come. Jesus said, Peter, come. He jumped out of the boat, started walking on the water. When we say these things, it will sound as though we are speaking of some stories that happened nations of years ago. I want you to understand, Hebrews 13, 8 says that our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The things that he did back then, he is able to do the same things today. I'm a walking miracle because God has brought me out of so many situations in which the devil would have finished me and killed me. I am a walking testament. In my own family, God has healed us of so many kinds of different diseases and afflictions. Yes, he's protected me from the barrel of a gun. He's protected me from death many times. Accidents and different things happening. So I know when I say these things that he's already won the victory. Satan, death, hell, and the grave has lost his power. No power over the children of God. You are a child of God and your portion is victory. What is promised to you is that God is with you. He that is inside of you, he is greater than he that is in the world. So when you go out and you face the situations of the world, remember this, my God, he is with me. My God is in me. My God is around me. My God is beneath me. My God is above me. And there is nothing that Satan can do to harm me. May the Lord bless you and keep you this morning. May the Lord inspire you through the confines of his word. I want to pray this prayer for you. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this time. We thank you for these words. We thank you for scriptures that come in and fortify us and anoint us to go out and do great exploits. I pray, Lord Jesus, for any and everyone who watches and who sees this video, from those watching it live to those who will play it later on at some time, let there be power and virtue in the voice of, 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 the, of, of the reading of your word, Lord, that your children will be strengthened and fortified. Let your voice keep reminding us of this promise. Do not be afraid. And Lord, may we find peace, shalom, solace in the confines of this promise. That does not matter what we go through. We will remember that you are with us. We thank you. We love you this day. In the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for liking. Thank you for commenting. I want to encourage you to share the word of God on your platform. I would keep saying that when there is a course out there, people are asked to like and share and comment, pass it around so others can see it. And yet the greatest thing we can ever share with any man is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So find a place within you to share the gospel. It might be this video, it might be a different one, it does not matter. 
It's not about my face being seen. It's about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ being heard. So I want to encourage you to do that. The Lord willing, tomorrow and throughout the rest of the week, I'm not going to be able to make it live because I'm traveling out for an event and we'll be back, the Lord willing, next week. But there is there are so many videos on there. You can go through them, find the ones you've not watched, and I promise you that you would find you would find spiritual food in due season. You will find a word of the Lord refreshing, being new daily. God bless you and keep you. Have a fruitful day and we'll catch up with you sometime, the Lord willing, next week. Bye-bye.